Hello, my dear students. Hello, future researchers. Hello, grade 7 students. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Teen, your research teacher for today. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in research. In our previous discussion, in our previous vlog, what we discussed is all about the measure of variability for ungrouped data. So this time, so let us now proceed with another or with the part two of our topic about measure of variability. This time, it's for group data. So paano naman magcompute kapag ito naman ay group data? So stay tuned on this channel and let's watch this. Measure of variability for group data. To find the range, variance, and standard deviation of group data, we have to take note of the following. First, we have the range of group data. And when we say range, this is the simplest measure of variability. Remember that the range of a frequency distribution is simply the difference between the upper class boundary of the top interval and the lower class boundary of the bottom interval. So, if you can notice, range is the same with the measure of variability for ungrouped data in the sense that we are going to, to get the difference between the highest and the lowest score. But this time for the group data, so it's the difference between the upper class boundary of the top interval and the lower class boundary of the bottom interval. So let us have this table. So for this measure of variability for group data, so this time what I'm going to give you is the table with the scores and with the frequency. And then you, you're going to get the, the other variables needed to compute for the other uh, measure in variability. So again, we have the range first. So to get the range, you have to different to get the difference between the upper class boundary of the highest interval and the lower boundary or the lower class boundary of the lowest interval. So this table shows the scores of the first quarterly posters of grade 7 meteors in research 1. So as you can see in this course, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 classes here and the lowest class or the lower class is 21 to 25 and the upper class is 46 to 50. Now, we are asked to get the upper class boundary of the highest interval. Alin ba dyan yung upper class natin? Di ba itong 46 to 50? Ano dyan? Between 46 and 50, alin dyan yung may highest interval? Of course, that is 50. So, ano ba yung upper boundary nito? And that is 50.5. Five, okay? Since mataas yung 50, ano ba yung kasunod ng 50? And that is 51. So, ano yung boundary niyan ng 50 and 51, which is the upper class? So, that is 50.5. So, meaning to say, our upper class of the highest interval is 50.5. How about this one? Lower class boundary of the lowest interval. 21 to 25. So, ano yung lower class niyan? Ano yung lowest interval niyan? That is 21. So, ano ba yung lower your class boundary ng 21 and that is 20.5 okay so this is the table that we're going to use in computing for the other measures of variability so later you will understand about this okay so let's now proceed again with the range so we have here 50.5 50 Okay, the upper class boundary of the highest interval and the lower class boundary of the lowest interval is 20.5. So, we have 30. So, the range for this is 30. Now, the second one, after you get the range, the second thing that you have to do is to find the mean. Okay, to get the mean, of course, before tayo mag-proceed dito sa equation, yan, ang given lang sa inyo dito ay yung score at saka yung frequency. Ngayon, kayo na yung maglalagay ng x, which is the mean or the midpoint of each class. 
and then fx, and then, and so on, and so forth. Okay, so ano ba yung mean muna nito? Sa, paano nakuha yung 48? So, same lang kung paano nyo nakuha yung X or yung midpoint or yung class mark doon sa measure of central tendency. So, kukunin natin yung gitna or average nitong score sa bawat class. 46 and 50, okay, okay, the middle point or the average is 48. 41 to 45, that is 43. 36 to 40, so the middle point is 38. 31 to 35, we have 33. 26 to 30, if you add this and divide it by 2, the answer is 28. 21 to 25, and that is 23. And then we have to get the fx. Again, fx, we have to multiply frequency by the mean or by the midpoint. So 1 times 48, and that is 48. And then multiply lang ng multiply, that is 430, 380, 16 times 33, 528, 9 times 28, that is 252. 4 times 23, that is 92. And then, of course, always get the summation. Summation of fx, meaning to say we have to total the scores or the, the data here, and that is 1,730. To get the mean, okay, if you can notice, we get first the data here before we proceed with the mean because we cannot have the mean without computing for the fx. So, to find the mean, we have to use summation of fx divided by summation of f. Same with the mean on how we get the mean in the measure of central tendency. Okay, summation of fx, that is 1,730 divided by summation of f, that is 50. So, if we divide this, the answer will be 34.60. So, this will be our mean. Remember that we need this mean because we have to use it here. Kasi, kailangan natin i-minus yung x dito sa mean na gagamitin natin. Okay? So, variance of the group data. When we say variance of the group data, it means variance is the mean of the square of the deviations from the mean of a frequency distribution. For large quantities, the variance is computed using frequency distribution with columns for the midpoint value, the product of the frequency and the midpoint value for each interval, the deviation and its square, and the product of the frequency and the squared deviation. So let us explain it and let's elaborate it. Okay. So, kanina, di ba, binigay ko sa inyo yung mean. Nakuha na natin yung mean, 34.60. So, kailangan natin i-minus itong x dun sa mean na nakuha natin. Kasi yung column na to, ang sabi dito ay x minus mean. Okay? So, and of course, yan na nga. So, x natin is 48 minus, ano ba yung mean, mean natin dyan? Okay, balikan nga natin yung mean kanina. Mean is 34.60. Okay, so ibig sabihin nyo yung 34.60, yun yung gagamitin natin na pang minus sa bawat x dito. So, 48 minus 34.6, that is 13.4. 43 minus 34.6, that is 8.4. 38 minus 34.6, that is 3.4. 33 minus 34.6, that is negative 1.6. So, nagkaroon na tayo ng negative dito kasi... Yung hinihingi naman dito ay hindi absolute value as compared doon sa ginawa natin sa ungrouped data na kinakailangan siya ay naka absolute value pero dito hindi po natin kinakailangan mag absolute value so ibig sabihin kung ang makuha natin ay negative then at least it should be negative so next 28 minus 34.6 that is negative 6.6 .6. 23 minus 34.6 that is negative 11.6 and then for the next column we have to squared what we get from this column so 13.4 multiply by itself and that is 179.56 and then ganun ulit yung gagawin sa lahat ng to i-squared lang natin diba pag sinabi natin squared imumultiply lang natin siya sa sarili nila so 8.4 time, times 8.4 
Okay, wag malilito sa square dito ha kasi may iba na nalilito. Ginagawa nila is 13.4 times 2. That is wrong. Squared meaning to say you have to multiply it by itself. So 8.4 times 8.4 that is 70.56. 3.4 times 3.4 11.56. Negative 1.6 times negative 1.6 and that is 2.56. Okay, remember Negative times negative, that will be positive. Negative 6.6 .6 times negative 6.6, 43.56. And then same lang with negative 11.6, that is 134.56. And for the last column, we have frequency times squared of x minus mean. Meaning to say, ang imumultiply na natin dyan is yung nakuha natin dito sa column na to, sa... Pang ilang column ba yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, doon nakuha natin sa ika-6 na column, imumultiply lang natin siya with the frequency dito. So, 1 times 179.56, that is 179.56. And then, same lang dito, 10 times here, and that is 705.6. 10 times 11.56, 115.6. 16 times 2.56, 9 times 43.56, 4 times 134.56, and then, last, we will get the summation of f times the squared of x minus mean, and that is 1,972. And remember this data because we're going to use this to get our variance and standard deviation. Okay, the variance of the group data will be this equation. So, F is the class frequency, X is the class mark, X bar is the class mean, and summation of F is the total number of frequency. So, sigma squared, var or the variance, is equal to summation of F times the squared of X minus mean over summation of F minus 1. Okay, so constant po yung 1 dito. Sadyang merong 1 dito sa formula kapag variance of the group data. Okay, kung mapapansin nyo, iba naman ito dun sa ungroup. Kasi sa ungroup, wala nang minus 1. Pero pagdating sa group data, there is always minus 1 here. So, pakitandaan ang formula na ito. Next, so this is the table na nagawa natin kanina. So, now using this formula, we can now substitute the given or what we have, or we can now substitute the data that we have in this table to this equation. So, summation of f times the squared of x minus mean, and that is 1,972. So, kaya yung nilagay natin dito. Ano ba yung summation of f? That is 50. So, 50 minus 1. Okay, yung dahil nasa formula. Okay, 1,972 divided by 49, which is the difference between 50 and 1. So, we arrive with 40.2448. So, kung kailangan lang natin ng two decimal places, we have 40.24. And that is for the variance. And for the standard deviation, remember that the standard deviation is considered the best indicator of the degree of dispersion among the measures of variability because... It represents an average variability of the distribution. Given the set of data, the smaller the range, the smaller the standard deviation. The less spread is the distribution. Okay, so ayan na nga. Kung mas maliit ang standard deviation, ibig sabihin, mas makikita natin na mas magkakalapit yung mga scores na meron tayo. Pero kapag lumaki at tumas yung standard deviation natin, ibig sabihin, kalat-kalat yung scores. Okay, masyadong spread yung scores, ibig sabihin, layo-layo sila. For the standard deviation, to get the value of the standard deviation, S... Get the square root of the variance sigma squared. So, this is the formula to get the standard deviation. So, standard deviation is equal to square root of the variance. So, since we already have the variance, so, ang kailangan nyo ng gawin ay squared lang natin yon. So, 
Ano ba yung nakuha natin kanina? That is 40.24. So, what is the square root of 40.24? That is 6.34. This is the end of our lesson vlog about measure of variability for group and ungrouped data. I hope you learned something from this vlog at samahan niyo ulit ako sa ating mga susunod pang mga lesson vlog about research. So, still under pa rin tayo ng third quarter and maybe on our next lesson vlog ay fourth quarter na tayo. So, congratulations to all the hardworking students na nagsusumika para makatapos kahit sa gitna ng ganitong sitwasyon. So, thank you for thank you for watching this vlog. Thank you for listening. So, sana may natutunan kayo. Again, this is Teacher Tin, your research teacher for today. So, if you are new to this channel, kung bago ka pa lang, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in research. Bye! Uy, subscribe ka muna.